Hi folks, Modern Warfare 3 is here, but many people, potentially you included, have found that the choice of weaponry and attachments can be a bit overwhelming. But the great news is that rather than feeling like a rabbit in the headlights, I'm here to reassure you that you should instead feel like a kid in a sweet shop. I'm going to give you not just one, but two very easy to use weapon builds that are viable for both multiplayer and Warzone 3. Most importantly, you won't need to do any crazy things to unlock the base versions of these guns. So that's no 5 kills with a corkscrew on a Swiss Army knife in one match, no leapfrogging 3 enemies in a row without them noticing, and certainly no spending 36,000 hours in the game grinding XP on hordes of zombies. Ah, I can think of nothing worse. So you're asking what are the two guns and how do I unlock them? Well they are the Striker SMG and the SVA 545 Assault Rifle, and you unlock them by simply reaching rank 4 in the game. That means for many, you can be using a base version of these weapons after as little as one match of multiplayer. If you've played the game at all, you've probably got them unlocked already. I'll now take you through each of the builds and you can be on your merry way, casually beating the sweats before the game is even showing up on your credit card bill. Stick around to the end for a cheeky little insight into the Armoury Unlock system, including a recent change and how you can use it to your advantage. The first up, the Striker SMG. By using this gun and doing some levelling, you'll likely have access to better attachments for the SVA by the time you come to it. My recommendation is that to work on them this way around unless you are running two primary weapons like an absolute maniac. So first off with the muzzle attachment, uh, if you unlock the X10 Black Kite in Modern Warfare 2, that's a great one to have. Um, if we look at the uh, detailed stats here, you can see that it reduces that kick for the weapon. Uh, increasing bullet velocity and not too much other penalties. If you haven't got the X10 suppressor, what I suggest is using the Shadow Strike suppressor. You get that by leveling the weapon up to level 11. For the laser attachment, we're going to use the Hipshot L20. Uh, as you can see, that reduces that hip fire spread. It's got reasonable ADS speed already um, and movement as an, a as an SMG. Uh, but what we're looking to do is increase that hip fire control for really close encounters. Uh, in terms of our stock, we use the Crotalus Assault Stock. As you can see, again, just really making this a nice stable weapon, reducing a bit of that ADS speed. Um, if you're feeling a bit spicy, go for the no stock attachment on there. That really improves the mobility of the weapon. Although just be aware there will be a little bit more kick and horizontal recoil in that gun. On the grip then, we're going for the Saken ZX grip. Um, Again, just further improving that stability so that we can use this SMG a little bit further out into the mid-range. And then finally, stick your 60 round drum on there. Uh, if you've not got this one unlocked, because this one doesn't get unlocked till level 23 with the weapon, then uh, just go with the stock 30 round mag. On to the SVA 545 Assault Rifle. This is nice handling, reasonable recoil, but its secret is the way its first two rounds fire in burst. Similarly to the AN94 from Warzone 1. Anything close to mid-range, then you can use it like any other low-recoil AR, but for those long-range targets, you simply tap fire and this thing has zero recoil. Literally zero. So with the SVA 545 build, uh, starting with the muzzle, ideally you'd like the VT7 Spirit Fire Suppressor. Uh, really good attachment in terms of increasing the range and reducing recoil uh, with a bit of penalty to ADS and Sprint to Fire, but still very manageable for an SMG. Uh, the issue with that is that it doesn't unlock until level 4 of the DG58 LSW. That is a, uh, a base weapon, so you'll have that straight away if you want to have a, a game or two in multiplayer to get that unlocked. Otherwise, if you want to go straight in, then use the Broadhead 3DP. This is one from uh, Model Warfare 2, so hopefully you've got that one unlocked. In terms of hand stop, under barrel attachment, I go for the XRK Edge BW4 hand stop. Um, you can unlock this through the armory, or if you've got the Beta Ripper Rival Blueprint, you can get that to level 9 to unlock this attachment. Otherwise, it's the Bruin Pivot Vertical Grip, which you get by leveling the weapon to level 12. Onto our mag, uh, 45 round mag, just for that extra bullets chew through our enemies. Grip, Citadel Grip. Um, Really nice control for the recoil there. ADS speed, nice and snappy without too much penalty. And then finally, the stock is going to be the main V6 stock. Again, making these nice and um, easy to use. You'll see with the attachments I've thrown on these weapons, uh, con concentrating mainly on keeping them easy and manageable to use as your starter weapons. And now lastly, as promised, 
a little insight into the Armoury. The Armoury may seem confusing, and to be honest, the user interface is about as frustrating as watching your nan try to make a Skype call. You'll likely get there, but there'll be a lot of awkward fumbling about first. So to start with, you can't access the Armoury until you've reached level 25, so that's a bit of a bummer for the purposes of these day one weapons. But if you have a few XP tokens, or the right playlist, it shouldn't take too long to unlock this feature. However, once you have access to the Armoury, the world is your oyster, as an almost endless array of fancy kit awaits. Much complaint has been named at the way you previously had to complete daily challenges to gain unlock tokens, which you then use to unlock Armoury items. However, Sledgehammer, in consistent fashion for them so far at least, heard these criticisms and changed the system so that you can still complete daily challenges as before, or wins in games now also grants us a token every single time. There are also zombie challenges and tokens for successful exfills, but they are much slower than multiplayer if you're specifically aiming to get something unlocked. So once you have access to the Armoury, and have studied at Armoury College for three years to understand it, the beauty of it is that you can use it to skip the queue for unlocks, and unlock everything in the order of your exact preference. You can't live without the ghost perk and silent boots because knifing people in the back is your thing? No problemo, get them unlocked. You want a particular attachment that will turn your favourite weapon into a NASA certified laser? Bosh! You got it! Beams on toast await. You only need to unlock the armoury and get your head round it once, but when you have, it really is a beautiful thing to be able to pick almost any bit of kit in the game to fit it to your loadout without having to wade through dozens upon dozens of ranks. Let me know in the comments your thoughts and that one perk or item of equipment that you cannot wait to get rocking in the game. If you were feeling a bit overwhelmed and didn't know where to start in the game, you now have two decent guns to work on and enjoy while you get a better feel for things. I'll be bringing you far more loadouts suited to all manner of different Call of Duty and Warzone playstyles here on the channel, as well as news, tips and fun gameplay. I hope to see you back here soon, but for now, I'm out.